Magic Johnson weighed in on the reaction, posting on social media, I think the Bucks firing former head coach Adrian Griffin was a big mistake. It's not his fault. The Bucks traded their best on basketball defender Drew Holiday. They're not a good defensive team and are all around too slow. Always wonderful to be joined by Brian Windhorse. Hello, Wendy. How are you this morning? Good morning. Well, first of all, good morning, good morning Brian. Fair first of all, great. it was great. It was great to hear from Magic Johnson. I mean, he's been doing so many damn things. Uh, I, I, I'm waiting to hear from the basketball savant comment on basketball. So it was nice to see him have an opinion about it. Mm, sounds personal, I say. Uh, it tell is. me this: Are you surprised, Stephen A., that the Bucks, who are second in the East, they're 30 and 13, fired their first-year head coach? Um, no, I am not surprised. A matter of fact, I'm the one person in America who shouldn't be surprised. To my producers, could you do me a favor, please? Could you please roll the tape from months ago, weeks ago? I said the same thing over the last several months. Could you, could you please play the tape? I suggest you pump the brakes. Because, Adrian Griffin, if you are listening, I assure you the Milwaukee Bucks will cancel you in a heartbeat if Giannis wants them to do so. Adrian Griffin is going to get himself fired. I don't care that they're 23 and 6 against everybody else outside of their 1 and 4 record against the Indiana Pacers. You are the successor to Mike Budenholzer. When have we complained about a Mike Budenholzer defense? I say it with no pleasure. I think Adrian Griffin might be a one-year head coach in Milwaukee. You got to fix this defense. You can't. They didn't. They didn't do all of this to not be in the championship picture. Before we get into this, I just have to say I, I was just a little distracted because the first shot he had on a tracksuit, like he looked like he was in Sopranos, and then he was, you know, <laughs> suited and booted. He was a banker, and then we had two chains, like he came from the let out of the club. So it's just great to see your range there, Stephen A. Just, it's called versatility. It's called versatility. That's what it's all about. Listen, all right. doggy, Go ahead. Uh, 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 Wendy, I, I'm sad for uh, uh, Adrian Griffin. I mean, this is a man that got interviewed 14 times before he finally ended up getting a job on his 15th try as a head coach. I'm sad because at 30 and 13, being a black man coaching in the National Basketball Association with a 30 and 13 record and a top two seed, one would surmise that that is not a cause for firing. But you remember, Wendy, I raised red flags because I was at the in-season tournament in Vegas, dog, oh, yeah. and I had asked Giannis a question uh, oh, um, in, in, the, in the presser. And Giannis just went in and went up. And I said, yo, y'all, I've covered this league for a long time. I'm telling you, this is not a good look. Adrian Griffin is in a world of trouble. And this is the coach that Giannis picked. They, they, they interviewed three coaches, as Wendy informed us, you know, at the time. And Giannis picked Adrian Griffin and almost instantly you could see that he wasn't trying he wasn't feeling it at all I remember earlier in the season when they wanted to shift gears because they had gotten blown out in Toronto and they felt that they were playing they weren't playing according to their culture and they and and Brooke Lopez wasn't playing the way that they needed him to play so they wanted to change things defensively and obviously that didn't really pan out too well because their defense has been porous and we have to take that in consideration we also have to take into consideration that we shouldn't have expected them to be what they once were with Budenholzer because you didn't have Drew Holiday. When Griffin first got hired, what did they say? They had Drew Holiday still there. Damian Lillard hadn't been traded for yet. So as a result, you're looking at your team, and the team that you inherited as the new head coach was a bit different than the team that you ultimately ended up having. But here's the bottom line. Currently, with the 21st-ranked defensive rating, 28th in the month of January, 121 points per 100 possessions. You cannot follow up Budenholzer, whose defense was ranked first from 2018 to 2020, slipped to ninth in 2021, slipped to 14th in 2022, and then last season elevated themselves back to fourth. Budenholzer does know how to coach. Budenholzer does know how to coach defense. And when you see Boston, and you see Embiid and Maxi and Philly playing the way that they're playing. And you see Nick Nurse coaching them the way that he's coached them, okay? And you turn that around and you have a situation where you cannot defend against anybody, where the Indiana Pacers are shellacking you and busting your living, you know what? I'm not surprised. I don't think I don't I'm fair, very sad for him. I think he should have been given the full season, but I knew. 
from the moment Giannis responded, the way that he responded at the in-season tournament in Vegas, I told you from that day, Wendy, in Vegas, I said, this man is in trouble. I looked you right in your face, and I said to you, I don't think he's going to last this season. I came on first take. I said it not once, not twice, but three times, and sure enough, here we are. Yeah, I remember that press conference after the game where they got blown off the floor by the Pacers, and we all thought that you were outside getting clowned by Shaq and Charles. And it turned out after you got that whole experience, you came into the press conference, you weren't done working, and you asked Giannis a question about the coaching. And Giannis said we were disorganized. And I remember my head shot up as soon as he said that because he was speaking the truth. And the timing of this is surprising that this would happen on this particular day, especially a day after they won. Although these days, if you don't pound the Pistons by 30, it's considered a disappointing performance. And they only won, I think, by less than 10. Um, but anybody who was out there watching this team knows that this team was struggling. And I'll be interested. So Magic had those comments. I'll be interested today as the coaches begin to talk to media whether or not they come to his defense and how hard they come to his defense. Because I remember vividly, guys, back in 2016. In fact, it was this week in 2016 when the Cavs fired David Blatt. And they were in first place, and they were 30 and 11, just like the Bucks are 30 and 13. But if you were around that team, you knew that that wasn't working. And everybody went crazy, and they ripped the Cavs for that decision. But they also knew under the surface that it needed to be done. This was very apparent right away that Adrian Griffin was struggling. It was a major red flag when Terry Stotts, a very experienced assistant coach, resigned before the start of the season. Very concerning. And they were trying to save it, and they were still getting wins, but they weren't playing winning basketball. And so I actually think this was the correct decision and a gutty decision, even if it feels a little bit unfair from the outside. Yeah, I'm not giving the Bucks any break at all. I remember one thing about Blatt. He played in an NBA final against Golden State. They were up two games to one, and he didn't have Kyrie Irving and Love. So let's keep that in mind. He had LeBron and guys like Jameson against Matthew the Warriors. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden we bring Lou in, and Irving plays like an all-time great and makes the big basket that wins in game seven. So let's be fair to Blot because he had nothing to work with in an NBA final outside of, Le outside of LeBron. First off, I'm going to give Giannis a little grief here. Where was he last year when they fired Boonhoser? Which was the worst thing the franchise ever did. The guy lost his brother in a car accident right around that first round playoff series against Miami. Giannis decides he doesn't want to play half the games. They lose in a bad series, no question. But Miami went to the NBA final for crying out loud and beat the Celtics on the way to do it. And they fired Boonhoser off that who won a championship, whose brother was killed in a car accident right around that start of that series. Did Giannis go to the, and Giannis can do anything he wants. He's making a fortune in a small market. He runs the team. If Giannis wanted to keep Boonhoser, he could have said, you know what, this is not fair. Keep the guy here. I didn't play in half this series. Why should I, why should you fire him? But he didn't say anything, so they fire him Boonhoser, and then the Bucks decide to bring in a guy who's got no coaching experience as a head man altogether on any scenario, change the focus of the team, and say, hey, go win an NBA championship. And so all he does is go 30 and 13, and now the Bucks are going to get him out. And listen, I love Doc Rivers. I've known him forever. Knicks followed him. I'm a big fan. Let's also be fair. Doc was fired in Philly, fired in the Clippers for underachieving with great teams. Now all of a sudden, Doc Rivers is Red Auerbach? So we're going to run and get Doc Rivers in here? Doc got fired. He did terrible. Harden got him out. And for the, no, I don't like Harden, but he got him out last year. He lost to game seven. And then the Clippers got him the heck out of there when they got murdered by Denver. But now all of a sudden, Doc Rivers, who just took the job with us, now all of a sudden, Doc Rivers is essentially the next fat rally and he's going to go fix the Bucks. You got to be kidding me. So I am really down in the Bucks and Giannis. They, they got Boonholzer out of there and won a championship. Unfair okay. when he lost his brother. Unfair. Yeah. And then Giannis. Everything you just said is very strong. Brian Winhorse, I want your reaction to what Doggy just said about the firing of Boonholzer and, and yeah. the rest of it. I would say that's a very good idea in the NBA. Whatever your reasoning for removing a coach, if you fire a coach who's been successful, you better know who you're going to replace him with. You better have your ducks in a row. The Bucks didn't, and they and they paid for that. But I'm telling you, dog, if you 
People in the NBA don't consider the Bucs a serious contender right now. And that's a big problem because mm. they got a, a roster that they have to win. The record is irrelevant. You do not watch them and consider them a serious contender. They can't change the roster. They're sort of hamstrung in to, with what they've got. They can change the coach. I know that they're going to take some heat for a few days here. There, there is nobody who has been watching this team closely who feels well, that this is a major mistake. Well, though, that, and, and to piggyback off of what Wendy said, Doggy, is that anybody that thinks that they made a mistake is in getting rid of Budenholzer. It's not in getting rid of Adrian Griffin. Now, if you're Adrian Griffin, here's the sad part. Here's the sad reality. You're 30 and 13, and people still feel that way. I mean, think about that. That, that, that. That's crazy. So you know that there were red flags. And Wendy's absolutely mm -hmm. right. There were red flags everywhere. No, regardless of them winning games, how they were There's winning games, their yep. struggle, people were very, very yeah. – they were very, they were not high on on the job that was taking place also, there. And Giannis in the, in, especially. In the month of January, the Bucks are allowing 125 points per game. That's third most in the entire NBA. They never should have fired Boone Hoser. That was completely out of line. Okay. And Giannis should have gone to their defense. Well, no, 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 no. Right. no. I what I would say real quick, Molly, is this. Budenholzer, I think you're looking at it wrong, doggy. He, because of possibly what you highlighted, he seemed distant. He seemed like he needed a break, like he wasn't himself anymore. So you're, you're, you're taking it and you're looking at it as a, from a basketball perspective. What you're not thinking about is that he may have been so devastated, the kind of impact that he once had, it affected him and his psyche. That's why he's not somewhere else coaching right now, because we all know he's a great coach. But sometimes you need a break. And that's what I saw when I looked at Budenholzer last year. All right, Mad Dog. But right now, this the far, yep. when Kevin Durant was foot, was this far too forward in the 2021 playoffs, if his far, if his foot is this far back and, and, and the Nets win game seven and knock the Bucks been out, he'd have been fired that, he'd he'd been been fired fired that, that year. It, it, was, it was, in some ways, it was that close. And I know they won the title. He was that close mm -hmm. to him keeping the job for two more years. That's the way it yep. went. Yep. And right now, again, Doc Rivers, the front runner uh, for the position. We got.